This is Mystery Babylon Unveiled, Lucifer the Queen of Heaven, Chapter 9, The God of Forces. In Acts chapter 19, verses 26 and 27, Paul confronts the worshippers of Diana and Ephesus. In this text, we see that Diana is referred to as the Great Goddess. It is important to note that this very same term can be found in reference to the goddess Kibali, a much earlier moniker given in reference to the enthroned mother goddess in the ancient and prehistoric period. Indeed, Kibali is also called the Magna Mater, which means Great Mother. On her head is the turreted crown, which represents the walls of a city. Notice once again that the goddess is connected to cities. Let's scroll down some here. In Daniel 11.38, there is a mention of a god of forces that a western king will glorify. It reads, But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces, and a god whom, whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. That word forces is, in Hebrew, mawaz, Strong's H4581. It is defined as place or means of safety, protection, refuge, stronghold. Other definitions include a fortified place, a fort or fortress, or even a rock. Here we have, in this image, the goddess Kibali and Diana center wearing the turreted crowns. And Kibali is a later version of the ancient prehistoric mother goddess who was also throned. Sorry, I went too far. Kibali and other goddesses have been symbols of cities and kingdoms throughout history. The turreted crown on their head, heads proudly broadcast their role as the protector of that city and everyone in it. As Demetrius the silversmith said in Acts 19.27, all Asia in the world worships the great goddess Diana. This area called Asia currently called Turkey, is also where large rocks that have fallen from the sky were worshipped in association with the great goddess. We see such a rock mentioned in Acts chapter 19. And when the town clerk had, appe had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how, the, how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana, End of the image which fell down from heaven. Acts chapter 19 verse 35 The worship of the Queen of Heaven is continued in Mecca at the Kaaba, and it can be proven through an abundance of evidence that Islam is a goddess religion. In Ab Arabian religion, before Muhammad, Dr. Brian Bradford states, let's scroll down here, these accounts of the black stone idol are further corroborated by those given by John of Damascus in the early 8th century and his fount of knowledge on heresies. John reveals that, in his time, he understood that the black stone within the Kaaba in Mecca to be nothing more than the head of an Af Aphrodite or Al Uzza idol, which the Arabs used to worship and called it Kabir, meaning great in Arabic. John also mentioned that even to present day, traces of the carving are visible on it to careful observers. Page 3-4 through four. Scrolling down. The authors of The Great Cosmic Mother, Rediscovering the Religion of the Earth, reveal that the trinity, a, a trinity of goddesses were worshipped in pre-Islamic Arabia. Indeed, one of these goddesses named al Uzza was the embodiment of Venus, also called Aphrodite in Greece. The threefold goddesses of Arabia, Al-Uzza, Alat, and Manat, Magna Dea, 
was enshrined in the sacred black stone, the Kaaba at, at Mecca, where she was served in ancient times by her priestesses. The sacred black stone at Mecca, site of so many pilgrim, pilgrimages, is imprinted with her vova yoni sign and is covered with a black pall called the skirt of Kaaba. The male priests who serve her today are called Beni Shaiba, which means the sons of the old woman, i.e. the moon. Page 156. I'll scroll down a little bit more. Since we will be discussing the yoni, the yoni signs and symbol, symbolism often, let us be clear about what it is. The yoni, according to Britannica, means abode, source, womb, or vagina in Hinduism. It is the symbol of the goddess Shakti, the feminine generative power. The connection to the, to the abode or the dwelling place is significant and it occurs often, such as with the Kaaba and it being a dwelling place for gods. The black rock represented a type of dwelling place scrolling down for the goddess in Pergamum. In the coat of the Black Virgin, Ian Begg gives us more information on the meteorites worshipped in association with goddesses. Kibali is the Freean mother of the gods whose prototype has been traced back to the Neolithic matriarchal civilization of Katal Hayuk. She was first worshipped as a black stone and it was thus that she journeyed to Rome in 205 BC, sent by King Attalus of Pergamum at the request of the Senate. In Pessinus, the black stone, which in Rome became the head of the goddess, was considered to be her throne. Her name is etym etymologically linked with words for crypt, cave, head, and dome, and is distantly related to the Kaaba. The cube-shaped Holy of Holies in Mecca that contains the feminine black stone venerated by Islam. Pages 56 through 57. Scrolling down. Whether this black rock in the Kaaba is the same that traveled from Pergamum to Rome is unclear to me. But what is so interesting about these stones is that they were worshipped as the throne of the goddess. In Revelation 2.13, Jesus Christ proclaims that Pergamum is where Satan's seat was. The, that t the text reads, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Revelation 2.13 that black rock marked the places where the goddess dwelled. Another indicator that that goddess worship was a major factor in Pergamum is that Jesus Christ proclaims to the church there, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them there that thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Revelation 2.14 As seen here, the doctrine of Balaam involves committing fornication and idolatry. We know biblically that the worship of Baal and Asherah go hand in hand. See Judges 3.7 and 6.25 In his admonition against the church of, church of Pergamum, Jesus Christ thus equates goddess worship with Satan worship. And his description of the pagan practices of Balaam directly corroborates with those of the old perverted goddess religion involving fornication with the priestesses of the Queen of Heaven. This is this no doubt also corresponds to that which was going on in the Church of Thyatira as well, as Revelation two twenty through twenty two reads, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave, scrolling to the next page, her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, 
into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Here, yet again, we see the act of committing fornication as connected with idolatry. We see here that the woman responsible for teaching this form of religion called herself a prophetess. This tells me that she was a sacred prostitute of the goddess. It is unlikely that she was actually named Jezebel. It's, mo it's more likely that Jesus Christ called her that because the same spirit that was working in Jezebel was working in her. Therefore, this, this is ultimately an admonition against the doctrine of Lucifer. After all, Jesus Christ called this, the doc the, called this doctrine the depths of Satan. Let's scroll down. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But, I, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Revelation 2, verse 23 through 24. If this earthly woman that Jesus called Jezebel had literal children, she may well have sacrificed them to an idol as part of her religious doctrine. As such, the threat to kill her children would be of little consequence. It seems that this threat to kill her children was not aimed at an earthly Jezebel, but at the spiritual Jezebel, Lucifer. Scrolling to the next page. We have an image of Svea. The, the caption says, The protector of Sweden, Mother Svea, one of many forms of the goddess who rules over all kingdoms. The god of forces. And this image is... The words are getting a little small. Let's see if I can zoom in better on that. Well, I, I guess that's the best I can do. Uh, figure nine, figure nine three, Venus with Apple by Bertel Thorvaldsen, 1805. Sorry, I butchered that. The apple symbolizes the forbidden fruit and is an object associated with Venus, the goddess of love which will be covered later in this book. So that was chapter 9. The next chapter will be chapter 10, The Spirit of Whoredoms. Mystery Babylon Unveiled, Lucifer the Queen of Heaven, brings to light Bible scriptures which prove that the one known as Satan, the devil, and Lucifer is in fact a woman. It reveals how she is identified in the Bible as the Queen of Heaven and the Great Whore of Babylon. This book also brings forth incontrovertible historic evidence confirming that Lucifer was worshipped in the earliest recorded history as the Great Mother Goddess and that she is still worshipped as such within the halls of secret societies today. Discover where the world's worship of the Goddess began and where it is hidden within the pages of this book. Mystery Babylon Unveiled Lucifer the Queen of Heaven is available in the paperback and ebook at all online sellers. If your local bookstore or library doesn't carry this book, please request it. By doing so, you will help get the book onto more shelves. Mystery Babylon Unveiled Lucifer the Queen of Heaven contains essential knowledge that all Christians should take hold of. It is an insightful and profound revealing of one of the greatest mysteries in the world. 